Hello and welcome to the Live Life Golden Show. This is episode 66, seven ways to get let go of living in regret and expand and grow into your power and strength. We are talking about regret today and I am excited to have this conversation because I think many of us can really shadow the life experience we're having by our past. And the problem and the issue, the challenge with regret is when you carry it with you, you actually carry the vibration of the past with you. So you can continue cycles and you can continue to live things over and over again because you're carrying that burden of regret. Uh, It takes you out of your joy. You know, one of the biggest things I think regret does is it takes you out of your joy and it makes you feel like things are not the way they're supposed to be, that things were supposed to go another way. And I'm going to uncover why that's not true and help you to have a little peace about your life experience and the journey that you've been on. So let's get started. So I'm going to give you, um, first of all, I wanted to start with like, what is regret doing to you? I always like to start with like where we are and then give you the keys and the tips and the tools to move forward and release that regret. So the very first thing, when we have regret in our life, what we're doing is we are allowing it to tune our vibration. So when we think about things and we're, you know, we beat ourselves up, remember that like shitty committee thing, right? Like the shitty committee is that voice inside of our head that is beating ourselves up. Regret is like probably the president of that club, <laughs> taking us out of our joy, uh, not allowing us to like really live life to the fullest because we're always thinking about what could have been, right? And we're beating ourselves up because we're believing that we should have known better. We're believing that we should have done better. And when we do that, we actually take away from our life experience in the present moment and actually deteriorate what could happen in the future because we're sending that vibration. We're sending the vibration of we're not good enough, we didn't know enough, we weren't, you know, we didn't show up enough, we weren't powerful enough, whatever it was. And in that regret, we're vibrating with it. So you can be like, you can pretend and you can say, I'm the most positive person in the world. But if you have regrets underneath, if you've got this low level vibration underneath, that is actually what you are attracting from. You're not attracting from what you say or you try to be. I hear people do this all the time and it kind of drives me a little crazy where they'll say, I'm trying to be positive or I'm a very positive person. And then, you know, I talk to him and uh, not so much. So (laughs) being aware of what is coming out of your mouth and what you're entertaining in your thoughts and allowing yourself to feel is way more important than what you say. I know words are very powerful and I will never, you know, take away from that. But the feelings that you have underneath are more powerful. I remember when we were going through like our most massive financial struggle and my husband had decided we had joined this network marketing company. We were all in. We were going to make it happen. We were going to make it work because my husband was so disgruntled and so disappointed in the construction field that it had become like a minefield for him. He didn't even feel like he could do it anymore. He was so, you know, disenchanted by it. So we decided that we were going to do this network marketing thing and we were, you know, just stepping into the law of attraction, really studying, really researching and believing the people that promote this stuff saying, just feel as good as you can feel. Just get into that feeling place. Just, you know, go for walks, be in nature, feel abundant. And we were doing that and our lives were crumbling underneath us. And the truth is our house was under foreclosure. We were going through bankruptcy. We had all this stuff going on that we were not acknowledging. We were just pushing it down underneath and trying to act like everything was okay. And it wasn't working. And it got worse and worse and worse until we really acknowledged it, acknowledged our feelings and started working on that and what we could do about it. You know, we weren't doing anything about it. We're just sitting there in fear. And this is how your car gets repossessed. And this is how, you know, you lose your house when you're not doing anything about it. Those things will get worse and worse and worse. You got to acknowledge your feelings, journal with them, you know, get to the root of them, release them, and, and then start activating what can we do? What can we do about this situation to make it better instead of just waiting hoping, praying, wishing, and trying to feel good about it, we were actually vibrating underneath, feeling broke, feeling scared, and feeling like the air had been taken out of our lungs. So uh, cool journey, though. I must say, like the expansion and growth that we received 
from that financial time are massive. And the only reason that I can speak to it today, the only reason why I can tell you that you're going to be okay with whatever you're walking through and that abundance is a feeling. It is not your job. It is not, you know, it's the way you feel about money. It's the way you feel about yourself that will actually allow you to receive more of it. And then it's working on your ideas. You know, it's like if you've got all these ideas in your head and you're not working from them. When we first moved to California, I was doing a lot of speaking and um, I was making, you know, money, uh, okay money. You know, I wasn't super confident in myself, so I wasn't really charging. And then when I came to California and I started doing energy release work with people, that's when I really started to come into my own and my confidence and I knew what it was worth. I had a woman tell me once, that working with me was like 30 years of therapy in a few months. And I was like, wow, how much is that worth? <laughs> right? So I started pricing accordingly. And because of that, I started making money that actually kind of saved our life at that time. Now, I could have stayed home and, and or I could have gotten a job. And the whole thing with the job was like I couldn't, I couldn't wrap my brain around a monthly uh, or a, an hourly salary that was really going to make a difference in our lives. So it was kind of like I had to, you know, jump or – jump or get become homeless. It was kind of that sort of a thing. So that's a good thing. Like when life calls you to those really big things. So if you have gifts, if you have talents, if you have passions and you're not acting from them, you are keeping yourself from abundance. And I will give a little plug for my creative circle, which starts tomorrow. I'm super excited. That is the intention of the creator circle is to get ourselves in the creative flow so we can create abundance. And we actually have people working on abundance in this group. So your project could be abundance. And I love the idea of tuning people into abundance. So it's going to be a mind training, guided meditations, release work, accountability on your creative project, and then, you know, working on creating an income through this thing, if that's what you're interested in. So that's my intention. And I've done it with a million different programs. Like I just throw things out there and people receive it and have a lot of fun with it. And I make money. And I mean, isn't that cool? (laughs) Absolutely. All right. So let's get back to regret. So when you regret, you tune yourself into sadness and disappointment. Do you want to do that? Do you want to spend any more time hanging out with sadness and disappointment? I know I do not. I think that is just a waste of energy. It's low frequency and it's just going to attract more of that sadness and disappointment to you where it can turn up as disappointment in other people. It can turn up in regretful relationships. You know, sadness and disappointment is not just regret. There's other things on that radio station that go with sadness and disappointment. So that's why you really want to tune out of disappointment so that you don't attract it from other situations and other people, because who the heck wants to live in that? I do not. So um, it is a waste of energy, but not a total waste of energy. And I'm going to get to that. I'm going to get to how regret has served you in the past and and why you can let it go now, because because you're listening to this show and you're listening to this conversation. All right. It keeps you in the past energy. So what it does is it, it sets up a vibrational frequency with whatever happened in the past. And even though you may not be the same person and you may not feel the same way, it is of the same vibrational quality. So it's going to tune you into past energies that are going to attract things in your present day experience. It keeps you beating yourself up. I said that already, the shitty committee, good Lord. It keeps you beating yourself up and keeps you in that energy field of not being good enough, of not knowing better, of not being good enough. And it does not serve you in becoming your greatest and best potential. And that's the mind, right? Keeping you safe and the same. So it's a mechanism of the mind. I'm going to get into that too. All right. It keeps you in powerlessness. So if you feel powerless in the past, if you have felt powerless to do anything against it, you're regretting what you did, you're mad at yourself for what you did, you feel like you weren't powerful in that situation, you will carry that powerlessness with you and you will create more reasons to feel powerless in your life. Like if you could imagine, it's like you're basically carrying the super heavy backpack that has all your past bullshit in it, all your past energies in it, and you're carrying it around. So it's heavy. And guess what heavy energy leads to? Heavy energy leads to um, sadness and disappointment. Heavy, heavy energy and leads to um, eating heavy, dense foods, drinking alcohol, creating more um, physical body weight, 
being really tired all the time, not having energy to do cool, new, creative, exciting projects. So it really does hold you back from a lot of different things. <clears throat> and that's why you want to release it and you want to let go of it. Um, you know, it also can tune you into this idea of this like impossible expectation. Like I should have known better. I should have done better. You know, it's this expectation of believing that at the time you had the ability to do something different. And the truth is you didn't because you would have if you did. And I want you to really hear that from me. If you had the ability to do something different, you would have, but <clears throat> you weren't in that awareness. You weren't in that expansion. You weren't in that knowledge. You did not have the access to what you needed. And this goes along with other people in your life as well other relationships. You know, when we hold other people up to these impossible standards and they lead us to disappointment and we're mad at them and we're in unforgiveness, think about all these crappy radio stations you're tuning into. What we do is we don't allow the expansion and growth that needed to come from our experience with them because we're blaming them. <clears throat> and we're putting them in this impossible expectation that they weren't able to deliver on. And that is like, it's just in the same frequency as regret. And it does not get you anywhere except for yuckyville. Yeah. Yuckyville. What the wreck? Yuckyville? Never heard of that. Okay. All right, so it also stunts your growth, and this is the reason why. So when we're growing, when we're expanding, when we're becoming more, we have to tune into a different frequency than our wound. We have to tune into a different frequency than what happened and our limited perspective about it. When we have a limited perspective about something, and we remember, um, I have an episode about changing your story, changing your life. I'm not sure what number that is, but you can look it up. When, when you wrap a story around something, something terrible that happened, and you only look at it one way in one perspective, you don't allow for new energy to wrap around it, and you don't allow for a transformation to take place because it's like stuck energy. You got all this stuck energy around it that just feels like crap, and it doesn't let you see it in another way. But if we really tuned in, like if you were to work with me for like five minutes on this thing, right? And you were, we were to go to higher perspective, which I always do. Like, let's, let's scope out. Let's, let's pull the lens out and let's look at this thing from broader perspective, right? Like, what did you get from it? What happened that led you to becoming more? What happened that led you to your strength, that led you to your power, that led you to knowing who you truly are? If that didn't happen, if you don't see any evidence of that at all, it just means that you've been tuned into the frequency for a long time and you've got a lot of momentum about it. So you got to start asking, right? Doing the meditation work, doing the journaling work, and then start asking, what did I receive from this? What, what gifts did I get from this? I mean, I have like a family estrangement that's been going on for like 14 years. I can tell you, I got a laundry list of gifts that came from that. Like it's who I am today, the strength, the wisdom, the my ability to speak to this sort of thing that's probably one of the most painful things you can go through and the healing process that took place has led me to so much more. So every single thing that's happened to you, no matter how detrimental, no matter how traumatic, no matter how crazy it has seemed, there are gifts in it, but you have to pull away from the only way you've been thinking about it in order to invite in new energies and new perspectives. So that is a, a cool thing that happens when you start going within and journaling, releasing, and you know, getting your own opinion. A lot of people go to therapy for this reason, and I, you know, I'm not a total um, down downer about therapy. The, what I don't like about therapy, I think, is when people just tune into a frequency with it and they're constantly reliving the problem and there's no solution. I think when we activate from that vibration and we just go to someone and we tell them our problems all the time, I don't think that that's healthy. I think there's a good idea to release stuff, but then we need new perspectives. We need to look at things differently in order for them not to be so um, such a low vibration that we tune into. All right. So it cre so when you're in regret, you're actually creating from a wound. So when we've got, you know, that trauma that happened or something that we did that maybe we think of as a failure, which 
I honestly don't even believe in failure anymore. And the reason why is because everything leads to expansion and growth. I was thinking this the other day, like no matter what I do, no matter what I choose, because I have a lot of different choices I could make right now, right? A lot of different projects I can do, a lot of different people I can connect with. It doesn't matter which one I choose because they're all going to lead to expansion and growth. They're all a journey that I'm going to go on that's going to be fun and exciting and you know, and it doesn't matter if it works out in the highest possible way. It's just, it's part of the journey that we take in life. And it's way better than just sitting back and doing nothing. Doing something is always better than doing nothing because it activates energy. All right. Um, So creating from that wound is something that you do when you don't allow things to let go. When you don't let go of the past, when you have a lot of regret, when you have a lot of guilt, when you have a lot of shame, that energy lives inside of you. Mostly shame is in like your sacral chakra. You can watch, I have another episode on chakras, but it's in your sacral chakra, which is under your belly button. That's usually where shame and guilt sit in. And then regret is in the solar plexus. So it's like not living from your power center. So it's going to cause blockages in those areas, which could, could cause blockages to your creativity, to your expression, to your power, to your confidence, to your self-esteem. So that's why it's really important to let these things go, to journal them out and release them and become more from it and find the gifts so that you can wrap a new story because a new story is the way. All right, so these are the seven ways to let this crap go. To let the regrets go, we've got these ways that we can do this. And these are all, some of them are things you can do, but they're also realizations. And realizations that lead to new belief systems. So you have to believe something else in order to create something else. So all of our beliefs create. Most of our beliefs were created by the time we were five, right? So when you think about that, it's like, oh my gosh, we're running around with five-year-old belief systems. How crazy is that? And most of those belief systems are like our parents, our teachers, our siblings, our peers. So if you really want to get a handle on your life, you got to get a handle on your belief systems. So in order to change the way regret is in your life and to release it and to let it go, we've got to change what we believe about a regret. We got to change what we believe about the life that you've lived up until now. And that's what part of these seven ways is going to be. All right. So the very first way that we're going to let this go is understanding this. It happened for a reason. (laughs) Everything happens for a reason. I know. It's so cliche and so, you know, so oversaid. A lot of people don't like like it because it's been oversaid. But it happened for a reason. It was part of your expansion and growth. And if you don't feel like it was for a reason and you don't feel like you expanded and grew from it, it means you blocked it. You totally blocked it. And the way to create something different from it is to look for the gifts. What good came out of it? I would say like all of our financial struggles that we went through, that all of that huge, massive, life-changing stuff led us to create a life of abundance that we've never known before. Because in the past, when we were, you know, we started with nothing, like scraps. Like we were, you know, working hourly jobs, um, no college degrees. You know, my husband was creating his own business for a while. He worked for people. I was waitressing, you know, like in a bar, like just trying to make ends meet so hard. And when we started to build ourselves up and we started to really become abundant, we were still not abundant because we were fearful. We had never had this kind of money before. We never knew how to manage it. We know in the the first part when my husband started really building his business and we bought a big house and new cars and like the money was going so fast, it was coming in fast, it was going out fast. No idea what we were doing. A lot of anxiety. I remember every time I spent money, I had this weird anxiety around it. And I had this weird anxiety. My husband was going to be mad at me. Like just not good energy around the money scene, right? And then when we went through all this financial struggle the first time, huge anxiety and fear and holy crap, our whole life is crumbling below us. But faith was was instilled, like massive amounts of faith because we kept seeing miracles. Then the second time we went through it in California, we were so much different about it. We understood more. We knew more. We saw more. We we managed through it so differently and didn't allow it to have this angst, you know? So we got through it a lot faster. And now we're on the other side where 
we both feel very much like we live in abundance now because we're not, there's no weird energy attached to it. There's no fear. There's no anxiety. There's no like somebody's stealing from me or somebody's going to take it from us. There's no more of that. We've cleared that out. We've done the healing work. So whatever it is for you, you've got to look at, you know, the gifts that we got from that are, are being able to speak to this. It's having faith. It's like if you've never gone through financial struggle, you will be scared of losing your money. You will. I've seen lots. I've been friends with millionaires who are terrified of losing their money. And I thought, geez, if that's what having a million dollars is, I don't want it, right? Like, I don't want to live like that. I want to live free. I want to feel good. I want to be passionate and faithful about the life that I live. So it's increased my faith. It's given me a reason to talk about it. It's helped me to give a lot of other people hope at, in their journeys. So there's a ton of gifts that went that went with that. And the knowing, right? You don't really know something until you've gone through it. The knowing that we're always going to be okay. That's massive. That's massive. Knowing that there's always going to be a miracle. Knowing that there's always universal orchestration. I mean, I can give you a million examples. That kind of stuff you can't really quantify, but you can if you look at your life story and go, oh my gosh, I've always been taken care of. So I don't really need to fear that anymore. I don't really need to have that anxiety anymore. But you got to do the healing work. Like you got to work on this stuff and process it. Otherwise you're shoving the emotions down and you're still vibrating with them. So you got to do that stuff. All right. So it was supposed to happen. There's a good one. It was supposed to happen. And how do I know it was supposed to happen? Because it did. <laughs> I think that one saying right there, that one statement has gotten me out of more negative emotion than ever before. There's a, there's a couple of them, but that one's a big one. When I go, like when I start thinking about something and I'm like, oh, I wish I, wish I didn't do this or I wish they didn't do this. I'll go, oh, no, no, no. It happened like that because it was supposed to happen like that. And that's massive. That's massive because that statement right there is what leads us to more. And I can give you an example um, of my daughter. She So she moved out to California during COVID with my granddaughter. And my granddaughter's father lives in Arizona. And because of COVID and all of the crazy stuff that was happening, we didn't know what was going to happen, right? So she was very fearful. She lost her job as a waitress and she figured she was going to probably lose her apartment and she kind of packed everything up and came here. Like she was scared they were going to close the borders and she was going to be alone. She's alone in Arizona with my granddaughter. So she brings her here and ends up not really doing much about custody and not really doing anything to get the dad to see her. I mean, he could have come out here and saw her for sure, but she didn't like connect with him. She kind of let it just be, uh, you know, in hindsight, getting in touch with him, talking, communicating would have been a much smarter step, but she didn't do it. And because she didn't do it, everything transpired, I believe, the way it was supposed to. So she lives out here for like two years. In the course of a couple of months, he ends up taking her to court. And through the court process, we end up hiring an attorney who was awful. He was terrible. He was absolutely awful. I should say his name on the show so you never – actually, I think I gave him a really bad review. Terrible attorney, worst attorney ever. And he basically ended up – the dad got full custody of her and they had to share her for every two weeks. She had to go back to Arizona every two weeks. She, baby, she's like two and a half and she's got to do this. Insane. So my daughter doesn't see her for two weeks and it's just stressful, like for two years, just incredibly stressful, sending her back and forth and trying to figure out how she's going to stay in California. So, you know, through the course of this, like she's got all this energy going and she just, just all of a sudden, she never gets a flow in California. It never works for her here. Like the job scene, it's COVID. I mean, it's just crazy. And every single turn, everything works out for her, but she understands how, and if she doesn't move back before my granddaughter starts school, he gets full custody and she will only see her on holidays. So that was like a deal breaker. She wasn't going to do that. So through the course of all of that, she realizes and recognizes how hard this is. And when we understand like how hard the energy is and decide to do something different, it activates and it opens pathways to us. Like when we stop doing the thing that's so hard. And she makes a decision, I have to move back. Like, this is just so hard. And it was her dream, she thought, to live in California. 
Well, she ends up moving back and her life has opened up so much. She has created abundance. She has connected with people. She is doing fantastic. She's happier than she's been in a very, very long time. And now because of the contrast of the ever two weeks, you know, dropping her daughter off to see her dad every couple of days feels amazing. Like being able to stop by his house and give her a hug on the few days he has her feels incredible. So she's created more joy through that contrast. Now, some could say that she screwed things up by coming to California in the first place. I would say it was all part of her path to A, appreciating living in Arizona, which she does now. California is too cold. Mm, okay. <laughs> um and just, you know, foraging a life for herself that really works when it wasn't really working here. So she got this incredible apartment that she could afford that was way better than what she could afford here. I mean, there's so many gifts that came out of this experience that most would say, oh, you know, she failed because she moved to California and she couldn't stay. And it's like, no, she didn't. She tried. God bless the girl for trying. If she didn't try, she would still be living in Arizona and wishing that she could live in California, not knowing that it wasn't right for her at that time. It may still be, but it wasn't at that time. So this is how the path goes. So we can look back and say, oh, she screwed this up and she screwed. She didn't screw anything up. Everything happened the way it needed to happen in order to create her greatest joy and her greatest potential. So I love looking at stories like that because if you can do that with your life experience, then you don't have shame. You don't have regret. You don't feel like you screwed things up. It's like, oh, this led me to here, which I'm actually really joyful. I, I'm living a much more joyful experience. Now, she's not with us, which isn't optimal, but when we see them, it's fantastic. We get quality time instead of quantity time, which feels great. So um, so it's all good, right? If you can find the gifts, you can find the good. Okay. So um, the gifts, part of the gifts is it leads you to clarity. So regret leads you to an amplification of your desires. So when you've done something or you've lived something that isn't fantastic, it clarifies what you want. Like with my daughter, living away from the dad clarified that she actually wants to live near him to make her life easier and to make her daughter's life easier. So that clarification is huge. And that happens in life when you know things happen that are not optimal. That clarification comes and your desire is amplified, which means the energy moves faster in the direction of what you want. You also learn, you can learn a lot of things from regret. Well, I ain't going to do that again, right? Because you've learned from your life experience that the way that you acted or the things that you did didn't end up being optimal or did they? So you got to look at that or did they? Because saying, you know, I screwed up or I didn't do things right, it, that, that doesn't allow you to be your greatest ally. I had a post on Facebook the other day, um, and it was probably one of my greatest posts, I think, as far as like engagement, about being your greatest ally and no longer being your worst enemy, right? Being the ally, saying it's okay, like you did the best you could. When you believe that you did the best you could with what you had, with the knowledge, the information, the awareness, the growth that you had, you release yourself from regret, massive release from regret when you know that and you believe that. So the clarity is fantastic. And you didn't know better at the time, so let yourself off the hook. And let other people off the hook for that as well. Like your parents, your best friend, your ex-husband, they did what they did because that was what they did at the time. That was what they knew at the time. That's the way they were either reacting from wounds or that was the best they could do at that time. And maybe it wasn't the best for you, but it was led to the expansion of growth of what you wanted to experience, what you came here to experience. So um, journal about this. That's a really great way to release is to write it out and to look at the cycles. So if you have some regret about something and there's experiences that happen and you have a feeling, it's a thread, right? Like that feeling is a thread. And it's showing up in different ways and different relationships. It's time to release it. Once you're aware of it, it's time to release it. And the way to release it is to journal about it. Ask yourself where it came from. Show yourself like how many times it's shown up in your life. And the most important thing about releasing and changing, awareness will change nothing, is to look at 
what you learned from it, how you grew from it, and how you responded to it. Because remember, your response changes everything. So recently I was thinking about something and I thought, um, <clears throat> oh, all I have to do is change my response. Oh, I know what it was, <laughs> my husband. Uh, so, we're, so we got a little trip coming up and uh, my daughter's turning 30. Uh, so we've got a little trip coming up to Connecticut and uh, we didn't book the plane tickets a couple of weeks ago when they were six fifty dollars because we were thinking the prices might come down. <clears throat> so my husband booked our flights yesterday and they were $900 each. I've never paid $900 for a flight, probably not even to go to Hawaii from Connecticut to we pay that much. So he booked the flights and, um, and I felt myself kind of going into that, oh, we should have booked a couple of weeks ago. <clears throat> and I let it go. <clears throat> I saw it. I instantly saw it and I went, that's how I normally respond. In that regret, in that, ooh, oh, I hate spending money like that, right? I just let it go. I was like, all right, okay, we got it. We got it. Abundance. Like we're in it. We're in the abundance. Like just, it's going to be amazing. It's going to be an amazing trip. We're celebrating our daughter. It's going to be incredible. We're going to Maine for a couple of days. It's going to be so great. So I let it go. And that felt so good because I didn't have to regret that we didn't buy the tickets a couple weeks ago. I didn't have to do any of that, right? You don't have to do any of that. So watch your responses because your responses conduct and they create the next moment. So that's a really great, God, that, that changes everything. Like responses change everything. It's like, how do I normally respond and what do I normally create? And then go, I'm not going to respond that way anymore. I'm just going to let it go. And then interrupting those thoughts as much as you possibly can so you can create something different. So, so important and so good. So interrupting the regret, stop shooting on yourself. Oh God, I have friends that do this and it's so painful and they'll be like, oh, I should have done that or I should have bought it. Or sometimes we do that with our with our crazy outfits, like should have done it. And and it's like, don't shoot on yourself, right? Like why would you do that? It's like you didn't do it because you didn't feel inspired to do it at the time. And if you if you did feel inspired to do it at the time and you didn't do it, then that's a really good expansion and growth for you moving forward. You can actually expand and grow. And next time you're going to do it because you're going to go, oh, I don't want to live in regret, right? I don't want to live in regret. So I'm just going to buy the thing. I'm just going to do the thing because I don't want to live in regret. It's not a great um, statement to say, oh, I don't want to live in regret. Yeah, one second. I got to answer a text message from the man. I got to answer my text message because he's important. We're actually going to look at a beach house in Newport. So I'm really excited for my um, upcoming retreat for my founding members in September. So we're going to look at the house to make sure it's all good for everybody. So I'm really excited about that. All right. So back to regret. So interrupting, no, no longer shutting on yourself. So it's understanding that when something happens, if you can just let it go and respond differently. So instead of going, I should have done that, or I should have done this, just go, okay, it happened. I'm just going to let it go. And just let it go as many times as you need to. If you're tuned into a vibration and you have a momentum going on shoulda, coulda, wouldas, it's going to take you a little time to break away from it. But the sooner you do it and the more often you do it, the easier it's going to become. I can do this pretty quickly and pretty awesomely. Um, but I've been at practice for a long time. Okay, so recognize regret for what it truly is. And this is what regret truly is. It is a mechanism of the mind to keep you safe in the same. It is that leader of the shitty committee keeping you small, keeping you in the past, keeping you from growing and becoming more. And that's no fun. So we want to get out of all of that and we want to become more. And in order to do that, we have to release regret and we have to release Whatever is causing us to beat ourselves up or not feel good enough or not feel like we did enough in our life experience, listen, there's no, like you're not out of time, you know, like life starts today. You can do anything you want. And that's why I started this creator circle. I'll give it one more plug. My creator circle starts tomorrow. I started this because I'm like, there's too many people who are sitting on these amazing projects, on these amazing ideas because their life is just too busy. And quite frankly, it was 
somewhat about me because I've got this prequel to Quantum Speak in my computer that I want to finish. So I'm like, well, if I create a group, then I'm going to create accountability for myself. So this group will have accountability. It'll have guided releases, guided meditations, and it will have me in there as guidance, encouragement, support, and you know feedback for whatever your project is. So you want to do this. Like I'm so excited about doing this, and I don't know if this will be the only one or if this will turn into something. I never know with the stuff I do. My Ignite the Fire Within turned into, I think I did it four different times, and I still have a group going. So super fun. I love this stuff. But it felt good to do something fresh. Like Ignite the Fire Within is an amazing program I may launch again, but it is very much about healing. It is very much about learning the law, the laws of the universe, which this group, there will be some stuff like that in there too. But it just, I wanted to move forward. I wanted to feel like we were doing something to like really take life by the, by storm and to really ignite the fire within. And creativity is definitely a passion for me. All right. So our life experience are here. Our life experiences are here to wake us up. I got to clap that out. Wake us up to wake us up. Like you got to wake up. You're you're living in an illusion. You're sleeping through your day. You're, you know, going to work, coming home, watching TV, drinking a beer, going to bed, doing the same thing over and over again. It's like insanity, right? So if we want to create something new, if we want to create a life of passion, joy, fulfillment, feeling like we're really contributing, feeling like we're really doing something with the gifts that we were brought here to express, then we got to do something different. We got to do something different. So everything that you've lived up until now is about becoming more. It's about expanding and growing and becoming your more powerful self. If you have kept yourself from that, now is the time. This show is the calling for you to let that shit go, just to release yourself from it and to put yourself in a new vibration where you create from new responses, you create from new energies, and you allow yourself to become more by learning and growing from whatever has happened in the past and then letting it be, putting the backpack down. I used to do that with people all the time during energy release sessions. We would literally take off this heavy ass backpack and like throw it over a cliff in our minds because so many people were just just carrying this heavy stuff around and they would feel lighter and that was amazing. Okay. So the more chances we take, the more mistakes we make, and the more supposed failures we live through, the more we get to know ourselves, the more we get to know our strength, and the more we get to persevere. And it's through that perseverance that we really get to know who we are. And you know, it's through that perseverance that our confidence is built, that our self-esteem is built, that our that our powerfulness is expressed, that we start to co-create with the universe and see the orchestration. You know, that's where our faith is strengthened. And that is a beautiful thing. This is so important. You know, this is such an important part of life. And it's so important to follow your dreams. I got to put this in here because it drives me crazy. I just heard of someone and I can't really share the details because it's like family stuff, but that someone talked a family member out of doing something crazy. And the thing that they were doing, I was so excited for them. And I was so mad. They've actually talked my daughters out of things too. I was so mad, not mad, but I was just like, why ooh, Why do people do that? Why do people talk other people out of their dreams? Don't do that. If you're doing that, stop doing that. We need to encourage people. We need to follow our own dreams to show other people what's possible. Because what is life if we're not doing that? If we're not living life to the fullest, are we just waiting to die? That seems insane to me. We got to live. We got to express. We got to become more. And living our dreams and doing those things that feel scary is the way to do it. It's the way to expand and grow more and not just, you know, waiting for things. It's not just, you know, creating small things. It's creating through the big things, the big callings that we really get to know ourselves and we really get to express our joy and, and live more joy. Definitely. So please don't talk anyone out of their dreams and don't let anyone do that to you. No, 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 don't do it. All right. So we are just about done. I'm going to finish up with this. Let's see what I got. All right. So just be aware 
of that mechanism of the mind to keep you safe in the same. Fear and resistance are always a distraction. They're a distraction from you becoming more. And if you let the fear constantly win, you will never be in your power. You will never allow yourself to really get like live from your gifts. Eventually, you may get sick of it, but we all know people who have died and lived a life that was very much less than. We all know people like that. So we don't want to be one of them, right? No regrets. We got to live this life with no regrets. That's the best way to do it is um, – you know, letting this fear and resistance go so that we can live in our brilliance, so we can move forward, so we can activate energy, so we can become more. So once you start to recognize and change your responses to things, you start to break free. So once you stop letting the fear be in charge, that false evidence appearing real, and this is this is how the fear works. So you have an idea about something, you get excited about it. Um, and what ends up happening is all of a sudden your mind starts to tell you why you can't do it and why it won't work. Or someone on the outside does that because they'll reflect your fears to you. And it will keep you every time. It will keep you safe and the same. So you have to bypass that fear and you have to say, this is why I want to do it. This is why I'm excited. And you constantly need to shift into your why, why it's important why it feels good to wake up every day excited about a project, why it feels good to live in fulfillment instead of regret. Why, why, why? Your whys will be strong. If your whys are strong, you will not let the fear ever talk you out of it. Resistance is another big piece of talking you out of doing things. And that regret and resistance are the same frequency. They're the same frequency because regret is resistance. It's resistance to moving forward because you're reaped in the past. All right, so let's start living life more fully. That is like my greatest intention in doing the podcast and just being this person who shouts this shit from the rooftops is getting people out of their life-sucking jobs, getting people out of their life-sucking experiences. You know, because I lived it. When we lived in Connecticut, my soul was dying. I mean, my soul, your soul's not going to die, but I felt like I was dying inside. You know, every day I felt so... I felt so disconnected from my dreams and what I really wanted to live. And your dreams don't make any sense. I didn't know this was going to turn into like, let's follow our dreams, but I guess like releasing regret, because these are, these shows are very intuitive. Like I just kind of let them flow. Releasing regret will allow you to follow your dreams because you're no longer living in the past and you're no longer worried about the past, right? Regret will just keep you in that. Like if you do it, you're going to screw it up. If you do it, you're going to make a mistake. So your dreams don't make any sense. Like us living in Connecticut, my husband having lots of connections, having lots of work. We just started to turn our financial situation around. We just started to feel a little bit better. Yes, we were still losing our house, but that didn't mean we couldn't find a, you know, a a better house somewhere else there, but it didn't make sense. We didn't know anybody here. I mean, we knew a few people. Uh, we didn't have a job here. Uh, I had only been here like once. I can't really explain to you what that call was, but I will say to you, it is the best thing we've ever done. And my husband will as well. We were walking around Laguna yesterday. If you've never been to Laguna Beach, California, it is the most beautiful place. I think I have not been everywhere in the country, but everywhere else I've been. And we were at this resort called the Montage and we were having, uh, we just had some like snacks and, I was looking out and I was just like, God, like so in love with where we live that that feeling of love and gratitude and following our dreams seven years, seven years later is still palpable. It is still here. And it is the reason why I get excited about talking about this. It's the reason why I have fine tuned my law of attraction journey and universal law to you know, the nth degree. I feel like I can speak so much to it because I have so much evidence. I would never have this evidence if I stayed safe in the same. I never would. I wouldn't have anything to speak to. I would just be safe and sad, probably sad, <laughs> not super fulfilled. I mean, it doesn't matter because I that wasn't my path. My path was to do something crazy and make this huge leap of faith. And I can tell you without a shadow of a doubt, if you do it, you won't regret it. There won't be regrets because when you're in that fulfillment, when you're in the energy of going after your dreams, you you get into the element of 
you know, you've come too far to fit. Like there's no failure. Like failure is not an option when you take a huge quantum leap like that. Like we were never going back and we knew that. And because we knew that, it strengthened our faith to move forward. And here we are. And I can tell you, we live a pretty fantastic life. There's no lying. Like my social media is not a facade. (laughs) It's absolutely amazing. And it's led me to doing this show and it's led me to sharing this with hundreds of people, the joy and excitement of life and living life to the fullest and knowing how energy works and knowing how the law of attraction works actually creates so much more power in your ability to create the life that you love. And that's probably the funnest flip that I switch for people. All right. My creators creators circle starts tomorrow and I'm super pumped about it. And if you're listening to this show, like past the time that it releases and you really want to be in a creator circle, let me know, like reach out to me. I don't care if it's a year later. Like that's kind of how I take my cues on doing things. Like if I get, get interest from anywhere, I'm going to do something because I have a lot of fun doing these things. And I love it when people come to me and say, oh, I really want to do this with you. All right. So that's it. That launches tomorrow. If you're interested, I'm going to put the link in the show notes. Um, M21 Revolution is going to launch another challenge in July. Super excited about that. If you want to learn how to meditate, if you want to commit to a meditation practice, it will exponentially change your life. There are also hundreds of videos in there. It's M21 Revolution on Facebook. Uh, We've got years of challenges and information in there to um, assist you on your journey. It's a free group and the challenges are donation based. So it's a great way to connect. I love you all. This is a short show today because I got to go. But um, man, it's one of my favorite topics is just releasing this negative, heavy, emotional energy that does not serve you. It only drains you and stepping into something new and exciting and uh, what you are truly worthy of. Peace. Love y'all.